What's good? This is the Four Colored Man Podcast with your host, Terry Blues. The podcast for colored men to be able to inspire each other. And today we got a very special special guest. He's a very special guest because it's our very first episode, so he's my very first guest. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't want this to be limited to just black men, right? So I had to reach out to my Latino brethren, filmmaker, professor, Gabriel Duran. How you doing, man? I'm good, Terry. How are you? Good, good, man. Before we started offline, man, we were talking about, like, you know, being in higher education. Uh, But before we get on that, uh, run down to the people a little bit of your history, uh, your background, and what you do. Okay, well, um, my name is Gabriel Duran. I'm actually from a small town called Wichita Falls, Texas. Um, I didn't fall into filmmaking right off the bat. I kind of... uh, uh, accounting pushed me in, in into that into that direction actually. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's uh, funny because like uh, Josh said the same thing. Josh. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely one of those things. But you know, as a kid, man, growing up in a small town like Wichita Falls, you know, um, I really noticed uh, filmmaking and the power of it as a kid um, through the ways of uh, MTV. Um, MTV kind of a. Uh, uh, opened my mind as a kid, you know, living in a small town. And then, you know, growing up Latino, you know, I played at my grandmother's house and I would watch, sit there and watch them watch their novellas. And, and when they were over, you know, we had our, 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 our free time on the television. I would switch over to MTV and uh, watching MTV as a kid, you know, during that time, it was actual music videos. It wasn't none of this reality TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I miss the days of like coming home and watching like 106 and park and shit no, like that yeah. man <laughs> yeah there's, there's no music on music television anymore i don't know what the fuck happened <laughs> yeah, it completely completely changed man and, and what really 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 like got me into like filmmaking at least the thought of filmmaking in, in the planet in my mind was um uh the the, the, uh, the music video thriller um thriller actually was like holy crap this is not a regular music video this is actually little short film and you know I, I was able to see the behind the scenes when they showed it on mtv and i was like hooked after that but you know as a kid growing up in a small town you know what are what are the real realities of you going to film school i mean that's like unfathomable you know you're in this bubble you're in this small town and everybody is laborers they do basically they're they're doing their labor and they've been doing it for for you know years and years and you don't have this outlet of like you're gonna go to film school like that would never fathom to a kid you know yeah yeah no it's it's interesting you say that like the music videos is what kind of led you into film work and like yo I think everybody remembers like when well actually like when MTV first came out and they weren't really playing black artists like that yeah like Michael Jackson was the was one of the ones who like broke through that and a lot of it was because you know his music videos were like short films like the moonwalker shits you know what i mean like uh uh who's bad like the whole gang fight shit them shits was like scenes you know what i mean it was something that, as a kid, you see regular music videos when it was like Billy Idol or Cindy Lauper, you know, back in the eighties, or you know, or, and it was one of those things. Until you saw a Michael Jackson video, and then you're like, "Holy crap, this is a different video. This has a storyline. It's not just random uh, visuals being thrown up there, you know." And, and I relate to from, from minute one to minute whatever, you know. And, and that to me was like, these guys are getting paid for that. Like somebody is getting paid. <laughs> <to do that." laughs> no, no, for real, man. I kind of got my start in the film and the same way of like you know i was rapping and a homeboy of mine was shooting videos he was always shooting my videos and uh, i tried to find a way to turn them into short stories and eventually that led in me making short films and going to film school but you know like you said like i i'm 31 and i just you know graduated you know finished school and all that and i always say if like i if I was able to have those, you know, influences or opportunities or be able to see that when I was younger, maybe I would have started a little bit earlier and, you know, been able to be further than I am now. But it's interesting that you were able to see that as a kid and be like, you know, 
that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, definitely. But the thing about that is that as a kid, like I said, being a Latino kid growing up in a Latino, Latino household and, you know, where I live, it was considered north side of Wichita Falls where all the minorities live. So it was mostly Hispanic and, and, and some blacks. And it was really mixed. It was kind of mixed. But um, I mean, my influences growing up were Cheech Marine, which is from Cheech and Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No chips. I mean, we didn't have, other than the Spanish channel, as far as kids who spoke English, Latino kids who spoke English, um, there was no other influence that kind of we could relate to us on far as television. So the black culture really really uh, uh uh play put a place in in in, in how we grew up uh when it comes to music when it comes to films and 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 you know just being around the culture it really sunk into us as kids you know um you know especially now like uh, uh growing up and, and then i look back and, and, and listen to what my remember the films that really stuck with me and a lot of them were you know those those films that were uh, uh, uh black stars and, and a lot of the hip-hop culture was all revol- revolved around that so you know i i from there i always wanted to tell <laughs> hood films because i grew up in, in the hood uh, <laughs> and i tell them real, sto- real stories you know yeah, and yeah. Like, you, know, you can tell uh, you start to develop over time you don't know exactly what you want to be at first you want to be a cinematographer then you want to be a writer then yeah. but eventually you figure it out you know yeah, yeah. Yeah. Eventually you figure it out so it, it took a while but i mean I think as a filmmaker, we emerge with every project that we do. We, we find ourselves, we find our, 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 our special note that only relates to us. Uh, the more that we shoot, the more we do projects. And uh, and for me, it was more about telling stories that really had a purpose. And a lot of it was kind of in your face and, 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 and uh, controversial, you know, for a lot of things. But I mean, I felt like if those stories weren't being told, then, you know, uh, who's going to know that they really exist? You know, and that's the type of filmmaking I really, really uh, re- resonate around. Yeah, man. No, most definitely. Yo, know, it is funny that you say you resonate with the hood films, right? Because funny story, like when I first got to UTA, uh, you were in your third year, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you were working on Streets of Scion. And I want to get to that in a little bit. But you were working on Streets of Scion. And I think the first time I seen your trailer, I was like, yo, my man made a hood film for his thesis. I was like, yo, I'm in the right place. Because the whole time before that, I was feeling like, yo, I don't know if I'm going to make it here, man. You know what I mean? But, but no bullshit. You made, like, you, seeing you make that hood movie made me feel super comfortable. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we can do that here? (laughs) And that's what I'm saying. I think, like you said, like I said earlier, I mean, I think you find your place. And I think with you, Cherry, as well, I mean, your earlier films are not going to be the same as your later films. Yeah, yeah. I think your message changes. You you, you start to focus more as which uh, what you want to say is a message. And I think uh, a lot of young filmmakers out there, they're they're more worried about um, um, what camera they're using uh how many people are on set you know and, and they forget about story and i think it takes that takes maturity and it takes a little time for you to to build your own uh uh style and your own story for yourself you know and um yeah <laughs> yeah no most definitely so uh let me ask you this like you know you say the mtv was like your earlier influence was like Like somebody's making those. I want to be the guy to make that. But what was your like actual first like step in the game? Like, like you shot something or you, your first time you got a camera or you know what I mean? Well, when I was, I had some funny stuff. Um, uh, when I lived in Wichita Falls, I, I, we, I had a, a, a Mustang Cobra. It was like my dream car, man. And I drove, I worked two jobs to get that car. And, uh, it was like, man, even back then it was like $36,000, you know, and, uh, I worked two jobs to get this car. And I had a bunch of uh, two other buddies who had Mustangs too. So we started a little Mustang thing where we'd hang out, build cars and stuff. We all started shooting videos for for us. You know, I picked up cameras and just started rolling what we were doing and just putting music behind it. And it was pretty interesting to see race, the stuff we were doing, we were racing with it and, and the way I was cutting it. And and it was just a weird day. And, and I, I enjoyed it. And then when I sat back and watched it, people were like, damn, what, how did you do this? And it was like, I don't know, it just came natural. And I love doing it. I love filming uh, uh, whatever I enjoyed filming. I like putting it together and it came out to to where everybody enjoyed it. I'm like, this is 
pretty damn cool. So that's the first time I ever thought about visuals and looking at at at, at, at um, adding music to things, and you know that kind of just kind of kind of got me in, in the way to to start really thinking about filmmaking. So that's the way, that's how I really picked up a camera, man. <laughs> it wasn't anything spectacular. Like I went out and shot my first, you know, feature. No, it was just like being, being it was just recording stuff that we were doing, basically. Yeah. You know? How old were you when, when you did that? Man, I was like, shit, let me see. Maybe two years out of high school. So like 21, 22, maybe. Oh, yeah, okay. 21, 22. Um, so yeah, that's what it was. It was just recording us ourselves, documenting what we were doing and uh, doing it to where it's kind of cinematic. I was thinking about shots and stuff like that, but I wasn't really being serious with it. I was just enjoying picking up the camera. You know, it was interesting to me to go back and see things you shot a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it wasn't so, really spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> so, so making that, well, two things, right? Yeah. Making that leap from, you know, picking up a camera and just recording, you know, you and your buddies car club shit to, oh man, I could go to school for this. And within you saying, oh, I could go to school for this growing up, you know, in Wichita Falls where that's, that sounds like a pipe dream. How did like your family and people take that when you, when you said you wanted to make that leap? It, it's, you say, asking me how, how they took it. Yeah. And I, also like. It's, it's funny because when you tell anybody that you're going to school for, for, for cinema or film, they look at you like, what are you going to do with that? And I'm thinking, well, try to go home and not watch TV or try not to go to the movies. Think about that. I mean, people are doing those things. Those are just magically don't happen, you know, and, and, and a lot of people say the same thing. You know, you got your degree doing what? You know, and it's like, yeah, exactly. Filmmaking, you know, and, you know, my, my parents always been supportive and, and, and my family's always been supportive of that, you know, and I feel like, uh, um, you know, like I said, I was in business. I was actually going to do business because I felt like it was a way to go and uh, accounting just kind of like sitting in class, man. And that clock just kept ticking and ticking and ticking. And I felt like I was in there for an hour. I only been there for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, this is not for me, bro. <laughs> this is not for me. I remember getting up and the professor saying, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm changing majors. And he's like, are you serious? Is it because of me? I'm like, no, nah, it's not because of you. It's just, I just can't come up with other people's money. I just can't be creative that way. You know, there's people who, I mean, I'm not knocking the industry. I'm not knocking the profession. You know, if that's what you love to do, man, more power to you. But I'm a creative person I, and I, I, I thrive on that. Yeah. I thrive yeah. You know, it's a beautiful thing to be able to create, man. And it's when you have that in you, it's hard to just, and not knocking, you know, people just doing a nine to five, you know, you know what I mean? But sometimes it takes a little bit more for the enjoyment of life. Yeah. It is. And, and, and trust me, this, just like a can is not for me. And, and a lot of people, this business is not for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, it, it's like you said, a lot of people have a pipe dream of being this or the next big, whoever, next big Quentin Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez or whoever. But I mean, it's a hard industry to be in. And, and you know that yourself, that it's one of those things that it's a hit or miss and you got to constantly keep grinding. It's not never a steady thing. Um, but if you believe in your craft and believe in the work that you do and, um, you know, you just keep doing it and you're going to be successful. You know, it takes a little bit of time. It's not overnight success at all. Yeah, no, man, it's about consistency. And, you know, that's what, that's my biggest thing. Like now I'm really working on my consistency. Like I, I know I have, and not in an egotistical way, but like, I know I have the talent to do a lot of things, but I know a lot of things in my life have failed because I have had the consistency to do them. You know what I mean? So even, yeah. even now I'm, I'm on this like 52 week plan. Like as long as I'm doing something at least once a week towards a goal, like it's, it's going to pan out like that positive thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's something like like you said, like I said, it's not for everybody, and, and you understand that the industry is about a lot about who you know and how you network, um, and, and you have to be out there and you have to be uh, um, 
vocal and you have to be present in a lot of things and make sure that your presence is, is well heard and and that you're, you're not sitting back and letting things try to fall in your lap because that's not the way it works in this yeah, industry. No, no, no. I mean, not, not in life general. Like, not, not in life general, yeah. especially in this industry, though. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those you have to get off your ass and go do it. I mean, nobody's going to sit back and wait for you. Hey, you know, you know, you have to, like, be persistent. You have to stay on it and you have to constantly be working in this industry or else you become irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. 